he should be running for the border. It's true. You never read where Jesus ran from Caesar's position. If he couldn't be Caesar, he wanted to be vice Caesar. Moses, the great liberator who came saying, let my people go. You never read where Moses wanted to be Pharaoh. If I can't be Pharaoh, let me be vice Pharaoh. If I can't be Pharaoh, not vice Pharaoh, let me be head of the joint snakes of staff. You never heard where Moses wanted to do that. Moses came with a straight up message. Every time he went to old blue eyed devil and beast, this never happened in Egypt. This never happened in Africa. This is prophetic. This is a prophecy in the Old Testament that is to be fulfilled at a later time through the New Testament and really through you and I here in this time that we're living in. No people, no 700,000, 800,000 white folks have ever been in bondage in black Egypt under a black pharaoh. That's the biggest lie that's ever been told. You can't find it in the museum. You can't find it in the history books there. You can't find it in the libraries there. You can't find it in the Medunetta or the hieroglyphics in any of the temples or on any of the walls. No white people been in bondage in Egypt under us while we would have eaten them alive. They had been in bondage under us for 400 years. You wouldn't even be able to recognize them now with all this dominant blackness coming from us. They'd be sitting right in here with us right now. We wouldn't know the difference. Right. One might stand up and raise his hand up and say, I'm here. <laughs> but we don't expect that to happen because they weren't in bondage under us for 400 years. That represents our condition today from the year 1555 to 1990 in a few minutes, I think. <laughs> and we fit the Genesis prophecy of Genesis, the 15th chapter, the 13th, the 14th, and 15th verses of being in bondage in a strange land among a strange people, oppressed and afflicted for 400 years. We're the only people that fit that prophecy. The giant Chinese, the Vietnamese, the Japanese, the Greek, the free, none of them have been in bondage anywhere for 400 years, except us. We're the only ones. So that prophecy fits us to a T. But it's the white man who put us in this condition and is now trying to fool us today, giving us some token Negroes. Colin Powell is a token Negro. Jesse Jackson running for president is a token Negro. You can't get free by being president, fool. You got Uncle Tom Bradley, he's the mayor, isn't he? Look, I don't bite my tongue on these chunks. I don't. It's you, so diplomatic and so sissified. Well, he shouldn't talk about the honorable mayor that way. There's nothing honorable about that nigga. He's a white man's nigga. You tell him I said so. His brother, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, came to this city to help fight drugs in this city, to help fight crime in this city, to bring the blue and the red together under the banner of the black man and woman. He came to help with the educational problem in this city. He came to help with black female dynamics and relationships in this city. He came to help the black community to rise up from the condition that we are in to a better financial and economic state in this city. But old Uncle Tom Bradley said, we have no place for Louis Farrakhan in Los Angeles. And you want me to stand up here and be polite and courteous? Hell, somebody must call it just like it is. All praise is due to Allah. You correct me if I'm wrong, but he wouldn't meet with his brother, the Honorable Louis Farrakhan. He wouldn't even approve of Minister Farrakhan speaking at the Los Angeles Convention Center. They tried to block and destroy the contract 
when the minister was to come and speak at the convention center. But over 16,000 packed in. And you had some others outside. You had the, the Jewish Defense League outside, Herb Rubin and the boys. It had been a few weeks or months earlier, he had a rally out there in Jewtown calling for Minister Farrakhan's death. It was called a death to Farrakhan rally. Now, you can do that in some cities, and you might get away with it. But you can't do that in this city, not with me here, and not with some of us here. So this Jew turned up at the convention center. And when he turned up at the convention center, and brought the bad JDL with him, the Jewish Defense League, came all up to the door where the tickets were being, or where the people were being let into the door and everything, came up haranguing the crowd and uh, maligning and trying to vilify our leader, crying about anti-Semitism when he was practicing anti-Kemitism. Kemet means black. And anti-Kemitism is a position of anti-blackness. And so as an anti-Kemite, he came up to our door at the convention center and we drove it behind into the streets, into the, off the sidewalk, almost in the gutter. And he was bad when he was out in Jewtown. But we said, we have heard that you called for the death of the Honorable Louis Farrakhan. Call for his death to our face, punk, and we will kill you right here on the spot. It was on television. It was on the TV. And the bad Jewish Defense League, the bad Jewish Defense League with big, big Earl Rubin and the boys punked out. They ran like sissies. And they had me on the news and questioned me. I say, well, they called for the death of Minister Farrakhan behind our back. But to our face, I said, Herb Rubin ran like a little sissy out here. <laughs> and so the white man who did the news, he said, the Jewish Defense League showed up here today at the Los Angeles Convention Center. And if they intended to make a strong showing here today, it was certainly muffled by the strong fruit of Islam forces outside. <laughs> this is also so-and-so, channel so-and-so move. Our great brother, brother Ruben, who's a minister out in the San Bernardino area. Powerful organizer, powerful minister. He's back with us. He remembers when he was working on the staff of the preset reporter newspaper out in what they call the Inland Valley, and the Klan shot our brother who is here today. I just saw him come in. Where is he? There he is, Brother Dublin. Shot our brother. He was working for the telephone company. Hold your hand up, brother. Right in the center, right under the clock. He wasn't in the nation of Islam then, or he didn't know it. He wasn't registered then, but he was a Muslim, because all black people are Muslim by nature. Has nothing to do with the Holy Quran. Has nothing to do with a place called Mecca. Muslim means one who submits his or her will entirely to do the will of God, and that's what we should be striving to do. A Muslim is the one who strives toward righteousness strives toward the principles of mayat. Huh? That's a Muslim. If you don't believe in no religion, then a Muslim is one who is in tune with the divine, universal, and cosmic order of things. That's what a Muslim is. So all black people are Muslim by nature. But the white man is a rebel by nature. As public enemy says, he's a rebel without a pause. He never ceases to be rebellious. He's not a rebel without a cause. He's a rebel without a pause. Never stop. He has a rebellious, concupiscent nature to always go against whatever God's law is. God said, thou shalt not. The white man said, oh, gee, try it. You like it. <laughs> Anything God says thou shalt not do, the white man says it's all right to do it. And you'll find him doing it, and he'll make everybody under his rule do what he's doing. The Bible said he would take and his tail and sweep the third part of the stars of heaven under his influence. Another scripture in the Bible says he would...